welcome back to my channel 5 minute economics where i teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes well the topic for today is consumers equilibrium and this very topic is taught in school even at the you know undergrad level so i thought why not to make a video regarding this topic well just a small disclaimer before i begin with this very simple video uh i hope you already know what utility is and what is law of diminishing marginal utility uh it will be easier for you to understand this very topic in case you are unaware about these two terms not to worry i am here to your rescue i've already made up a combined video regarding that topic and i'll attach the link in the description below so go watch that out first and then come back and watch this video on consumers equilibrium in this video i'll be talking all you need to know about this very particular topic with the help of diagrams and schedules so yeah let's get started guys also guys don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel and do follow me on my instagram handle 5 minute economics so let me tell you what exactly is consumers equilibrium well before going to the economic economic part and the boring definition part let me give you a very simple example with the help of which you will actually understand what is consumers equilibrium so for example you go for street shopping all of us love street shopping right is it especially the girls who are watching this well supposedly you go to maybe a kulaba causeway or let me tell you maybe lajpat nagar wherever wherever you want to go for street shopping and you find a shop and you like a very nice shirt or a t-shirt and you ask the person selling it kitne ka hai right we ask for the price and that guy says 1000 and you will be like bhaiya hame bhi pata hai hum pehli baar aapki shop pe nahi aaye hum roz aate all of that bargaining thing happens right when he tells you 1000 you then he tells you what the price is the price you have in your mind right you say 500 then he like nahi nahi mujhe nahi jamega you know i wouldn't gain any profit if i give you for 500 and then that banter happens when you are saying 500 and he is saying 1000 and ultimately he'll be like acha chalo na no so me de do 900 me give it to me and you will be like no give it for 600 and then that banter uh, continues till the time you reach a point maybe like he says ki chalo madam na aapki na hamari 750 me de do isn't it this happens with all of us right and you feel okay chalo 750 is okay close to 500 and maybe not like as much as 1000 so then you both agree at a point which is 750 and you buy the t-shirt for 750 well exactly what is consumers equilibrium we tend to um, equalize our income in the most rational way we tend to equalize at the price where we feel that our utility is maximum you know we feel that okay that 750 what i'm spending on that shirt or t-shirt is worth the t-shirt thousand i wouldn't you know buy it so you reach a point where you find the point that price of 750 is the price where you actually buy that shirt for and that is the point of consumers equilibrium well if you want to see the example you can easily write it in your own words but let me explain you with the help of a definition so utility maximizing consumer will be in equilibrium when he or she purchases that much quantity of the commodity where the marginal utility of the commodity equals the price like at 750 i felt satisfied i felt okay that much money i can shell out for that t-shirt that much money is worth for that t-shirt so at the point where our utility equals the price is known as the consumer's equilibrium so in economics we always say or we always assume that a consumer is rational or we also say it as utility maximizing consumer isn't it so a rational or a utility maximizing consumer will always allocate his limited income we all have limited income right so in such a way that we can get maximize a uh, maximum utility had we had in you know unlimited income we wouldn't have cared it would be just whatever price you ask okay i'll give but we all have unlimited wishes and wants but our income is limited isn't it so we have to maximize our income in such a way that we get uh, you know allocate our income in such a way that we get maximum utility so this is actually the backdrop or what exactly is consumers equilibrium guys whenever in economics we study a model we always know that we have to have a certain set of or a rule of in assumptions when we are studying a uh, law or a theory right so under this theory or under this law whatever you can call it uh, we are going to study few assumptions well some of them actually most of them i'm going to discuss with you so number one is consumers expected to be rational well of course if a consumer is not rational he would have bought that t-shirt for 1000 bucks as well but because a consumer is rational he knows where to spend how to spend how to allocate his income 
uh, then only can you uh, reach the point of consumer's equilibrium. Secondly, utility should be measured in money terms, right? Then only can we actually allocate, okay, 750 ticket, na hai utility is 750 is worth. So that's why utility should be uh, measurable in monetary terms. Then law of DMU operates now. By now, I hope you already know what is law of DMU. Well, just in case you don't know law of DMU or law of diminishing marginal utility states that as we have more of a commodity, we wish to have lesser of it. You know, one first glass of water when we have, when we are extremely thirsty, that water glass of water gives us immense satisfaction. Second glass of water will give us lesser satisfaction because our thirst is already satisfied. Third glass would give us even lesser satisfaction. We wouldn't actually want to have that third glass also. And after having the fourth glass of water, we might just feel too much of water and we might feel pukish, right? So as we have more of a commodity, uh, the utility derived from every successive unit keeps on falling. Next, utility of each unit of currency is constant. For example, you know that 10 rupee note or 20 rupee note or 100 rupee note, whatever, it should, uh, the value should be constant and not keep on changing. Next, consumer's income is obviously constant. Then only we can, you know, allocate it in such a way. If it keeps changing, then we wouldn't be able to operate under this law. And lastly, guys, prices of other commodities are given or constant. They wouldn't change. So these are the assumptions when you study consumer's equilibrium. So guys, before moving ahead uh, with the topic, I would like to give you a little more information about a certain topic under consumer's equilibrium. Well, till now, I'm sure you already know what is MUX is equal to PX. It is that point uh, where the marginal utility equals the price. At uh, the example, what yeah, I had given you, 750 was the point where a utility equalized the price, right? But actually, there is one more thing which I would like to tell you. Money and commodity both get the consumer utility. Hence, either he can spend it or keep that money. Well, of course, that 750 rupee was, uh, rupees in my wallet was giving me enough or immense satisfaction and so was buying that shirt, right? Money and shirt both give me satisfaction. So it is my call now what to do. So there are two scenarios to it. Number one being if MU or marginal utility of money is less than the marginal utility of commodity, then it is but obvious he will go and buy and spend the money and buy that commodity. Well, buying that shirt will give me more satisfaction than keeping that 750 rupee in rupees in my wallet. I'll buy that shirt and maybe wear it to a party, right? So I will go and buy that shirt when the MU of commodity is more than the money which I have. Whereas second scenario is MU of money is more than MU of commodity, then he will spend less on buying the commodity. Well, I think I can do better. That 750 shirt, worth shirt is not worth the price. So maybe I can just, just keep that money with myself and not spend on buying the commodity because at that point of time, that money is giving me more satisfaction than actually buying that shirt. So I hope you've understood the three scenarios where MUX is greater than PX, MUX is lesser than PX, and of course our consumer's equilibrium situation where MUX is equal to PX. So lastly guys, coming to the schedule and diagram as I had promised you right in the beginning of the video. Now you already know what, are, what is consumer's equilibrium, you know the three conditions already. So now we're just going to apply that uh, in the schedule. Okay, so now we've taken unit of jeans, enough of tops and shirts, now going to jeans and buying some lures for ourselves. Here are the jeans and here is our marginal utility which we are deriving from every uh, purchase of jeans. Now we've assumed that the price of one jeans is 600. Okay, that what we, is what we've assumed. What we see is when we buy the first pair of jeans, we get a utility of 700. Okay, now we're getting more utility. Uh, then of course we want to buy in bulk because maybe there's an offer or a discount or whatever reason. Uh, we just wish to buy many jeans. Uh, hypothetically then we'll buy a second pair of jeans okay now the second pair of jeans is giving us lesser satisfaction which is 650 why less because law of dmu is applicable over here guys as i mentioned you that uh, glass of water example as we buy more of the commodity the utility derived from every successive unit keeps on falling and you know which a second uh, you know uh, purchase of jeans is giving us 650 uh, utils or you know satisfaction what we are getting now we'll buy one more jeans now the third pair of jeans is giving us 600 uh, utils uh, satisfaction okay now what we see at this point is the point where our MUX is equal to PX we already know price is 600 okay so we reach a point where we reach the consumers equilibrium why were we buying more uh, jeans because as I mentioned to you, when we are getting, uh, when you know, MUX is more than the PX. Here, 700 and 650 are more than 600, right? So in that case, we keep on purchasing more, as I just told you. 
But in the second half now, we will see after purchase of third jeans, when we purchase the fourth pair, it is giving us 500. Whereas when we purchase the fifth pair, it is giving us 350, which is much lesser than 600. So at this point, under uh, the third pair of jeans, we see our PX is greater than MUX. So I feel it is better to keep that money in my pocket rather than buying jeans. So how many jeans do I actually buy? I buy three pair of jeans because this is the point of consumer's equilibrium. So this is what I have shown diagrammatically also guys. As you can see, I always tell, even in my class, I used to say the same thing, that always label the diagram perfectly. X axis, Y axis, origin. Here we have units of the commodity and here we have MU upon the price. Now what we notice, 600 we already know, three pair of jeans we already know, right? So here we plotted it that way. Blue line, if you can see guys, the blue line is the price line, which is the budget line. Okay, now we see that at 600 point, we purchased three uh, jeans and three pair of jeans. And this is the point of equilibrium, consumer's equilibrium, exactly what I've shown just diagrammatically. Above that is MUX is greater than PX and hence we are buying more. Whereas below that PX is more than MUX, that's why we are buying less. So that is what is shown diagrammatically. MU, which is this uh, line, this red line, is negatively inclined. Why? Because law of DMU is operational, whereas this is a horizontal price line, which is uh, horizontal and parallel to the x-axis. So this is all what I had to explain to you regarding the diagram, regarding the schedule. Rather, what exactly is consumer's equilibrium? Actually, rather a very simple um, topic. And if you just watch my video once or twice, I'm sure or you will be, you know, crystal clear with this particular topic. So that's all about consumer's equilibrium, guys. In future, surely I'll come up with law of equi-marginal utility and any other topics which you want me to come up with, do comment in the comment section below. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video pretty soon.